Heather Carlucci is a medical intuitive and a psychic medium. She's a frequent guest at Ghost Stories by the Fire events due to her constant contact with spirits on the other side. In this episode, Heather's story features the mystical use of the number seven, a drunk driver, and how things in the spiritual and physical world often come full circle. Her tale takes place deep in the heart of the Western Catskills of upstate New York. So please enjoy Heather Carlucci's How to Cleanse a Haunted House. I chose this story, A, it's one of my favorites, but also because it has to do with doing the work. And I know a lot of people here are practitioners or working on their own intuition and working on their own magic. And I thought it would be really fun to share this one because it was part of a first for me. So about 11 years ago, uh, I'm talking on the phone with a friend and we still talked on the phone. Uh, some of the last years we actually <laughs> talked on the phone quite a bit. And she was like, we're gonna move. I was like, why are you gonna move? She's like, eh, it's time, we need a bigger place. But last night was really the straw that broke the camel's back. And in the middle of the night, her and her husband woke up to a huge ruckus downstairs and they ran downstairs and this guy who was raging blind drunk drove up onto their lawn, burst outside, started screaming at the house, thinking it was somebody else's, urinated on the lawn, she picks up, calls the sheriff, we live in a small town in the Catskills, calls the sheriff, and her husband runs to try to get the car keys out of the guy's hands. Her husband's really scrappy, but this guy was huge and raging. She said it looked like he had fire in his eyes. It's all very traumatic. Husband could not get the keys out of this guy's hand or out of the car, nothing. And the guy throws him down, jumps in the car, and drives away. She tells the sheriff which way the car is going. And they're like, holy moly, that's, that's the big sign. We got to move. We got to get out of here. Find out maybe an hour later, guy wrapped the car around a tree, passes immediately. Wow. Right? She's like, we got to get out of here. I said, what are you going to do? She said, well, another friend of ours said they just bought this random house that was in between his house and his son's house so that, like, they could have control of what goes on in between the two houses. It's really old. He said we could live in it for really cheap if we just sort of, like, do it up a bit because it's kind of a mess. Just They had one friend in it once who just, like, get his life together. And so that's the only thing that's been going on in that house. So at that point in my career... I've only really cleansed spaces for myself. I didn't make it part of my offerings. And something in me really stupid was like, hey, why don't I cleanse that for you? And she's like, that would be great. And I was like, yeah, I'll do that. And so later that day, I'm on the phone with my friend Woody. Now, Woody was my closest friend and also my closest friend was also a medium with many, many years under his belt. And he was trained in the ways of low country in South Carolina, radically different than myself. And my approach is very technical and science-based. And his was like, girl, did you read that house first? And I was like, yeah, I did. He said, yeah, I'm reading it now. I was like, did you see the little girl? He said, yes, I did. I said, oh, good. I said, did you see the man? She said, yes, I did. And I said, you know what I also saw in that house was a vision of a man in a hallway laying across it with bottles all around him. He said, I don't see that, but I can feel that. I said, I know, it's a little sad. He said, there are a couple things I want you to do. And I was like, nah, I'm good, I got this. He was like, no, you don't got this. These are the things I want you to do. He said, you need a watch. So you and Allison, my friend whose house it is, so you and Allison, can time each other because I want you to do the first step in seven minutes. Mm. And I was like, okay. So the second thing you got to do is you got to get a jar of water from the nearest natural body of water. Mm. That was easy because we all live on the Delaware River. Mm -hmm. And the house, of course, was perched on a hill overlooking because houses like this that are this spooky 
They don't just sit low. They sit low. <laughs> <laughs> there's always bats. There's always cats. <laughs> the next thing you got to do, he said, I need you a number two pencil that hasn't been uh, sharpened yet and a sharpener. Mm -hmm. I said, okay. He said, so the first thing you got to do, and I did this, he says, first thing I do, you and Allison have to look at your watches. We get to find watches because who has the watches? Mm -hmm. You have to sync up for seven minutes, and I want you to go through the entire house and make make note of everything in seven minutes, all the way up and all the way down, and then come out again. And then you can go do what you do. Mm. If you ever feel weird, spill a little bit of the river water. That should clear it. And if at any time you feel unsafe, I want you to take that sharpened pencil that I sharpen when I'm at the front door before I walk in and write a seven on the interior door jam of the seventh doorway you walk through. And I was like, okay, you got it. So I call Allison. I was like, you game? She's like, oh yeah. I was like, okay, <laughs> we're doing this thing. And I was like, I just, I'll get that done. And then I'll do what I do, what I usually do. Allison and I show up to the house. And we're like, okay, go, right? Sharpening that pencil, walk in the door. I throw up the front door. There are two front doors. There's a main front door that would walk into a foyer. And then one front door kind of set back because there's a wraparound porch. And it goes right into the kitchen. And I walk into the kitchen and I was like, oh, fuck. It was like walking into a crowd of people. Nobody was there. There, everything in the kitchen was this amazing teak wood. It was a way older house than it looked like from the outside. It had been painted over so many times you couldn't tell. Right now it's like red and white, something like that. And I look around on the first doorway on my right. So the front door is the first doorway. Second doorway doesn't have a door on it. It goes right to the basement. It's pitch black. And it doesn't even look like the steps go all the way down. And I was like, we're not going to count <laughs> I'm not walking through that doorway. <laughs> Even I know better. And I was like, you know what? No matter what happens here, I got to tough this out. Because if I'm going to keep doing this professionally, the cleansing part, I got to be afraid of nothing, right? I have to like get through this, right? Because I know in my head and in my intuition, nothing can really mess with me. I get that. So there's another door, there's a bathroom. He said, Deep closets are okay, cabinets are not, and there were cabinets everywhere. It was a big, old-fashioned kitchen. So I went out all through. I ended up going in through the back of the foyer. I saw the front door. I came around this big living room, this big fireplace. It was all brick. Huge windows everywhere. It did not look this impressive from the outside. Came around to what was probably a dining room. In the corner, I see a stand-up piano covered in dust. And I was like, I could feel the energy off of it. And I come around and there is the lat there's the seventh door. It's the back of the kitchen with one of those old swinging wooden doors that all they all used to have. And it was wedged open by like a little wooden wedge as you would probably keep right to keep your door open. So I try to like move the door and it's jammed, like really jammed, both hands, whatever. I'm like, okay, seventh one, let's go. I take my pencil out and I'm about to put a seven on the door jam and the door swings shut. This door I could not move, swing shut. And I put my hand up and like, like that. And I was like, holy shit. This was like movie level action. <laughs> and there was nobody there to witness it with me. So I'm like, okay, okay. I got my jar of water. I spill it in the corner behind the door. And amazingly, I was like, holy cow, it dissipated. This is amazing. I was like, okay, I can do this. But right now, I'm already, I can, everything I'm feeling, everything is going on. I felt like I could not protect myself enough before I walked in the house. No matter what I do, how I do it, I was like, oh, we are in. It's go time. I walk through, and I look to my right as I walk into that big living room with the fireplace, and there is a little tiny desk covered in cobwebs with a little tiny chair and suddenly I feel somebody next to me and it's low it's the little girl Ooh. I could feel I know nothing's freakier than a kid yeah. right? <laughs> that and all but anyway 
government. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, we are here. It is happening. I walk and I was like, okay, I acknowledge the living room. I acknowledge that crazy dining room, that piano yet to come. Okay. And I, as I'm walking towards the doorway, it occurs to me, holy shit, it's daylight. There's nothing weirder than a spooky house when it's a daylight because you know there's no end. The sun can't come up and make you feel better. Yeah. I go towards the stairway and suddenly a marble rolls out from underneath the stairs like she wants to play. Aww. I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> and she was so sweet. You could feel it. I could see it. I could see it at this point. I was like... I keep moving. Remember, the clock's ticking. Because I, I don't want to know what happens if I'm not out of here in seven minutes, right? So I run up the stairs, and I'm like, okay, where is everything? I turn to the right, and there is, in front of me, the master bedroom, which is amazing, because all the windows in a big round circle facing the river. The light is coming in, and in the middle of it are piles of the window screens. All the windows are open. Like, it's weird. Don't think anything of it. Piled in the middle. Okay. Acknowledge. We acknowledge. And then I turn around and look down the hallway. I could see there's a bathroom at the end, which is how my friend is going to make her money back because it's the worst bathroom I've ever seen. <laughs> She's going to have to redo that bathroom. And I look down, and there is the image in my mind's eye of the person laying in the middle of the hallway with the bottles of beer. I say hello, I go into the bathroom, I come out, and then I go to the left, and there's obviously a child's bedroom. And the papers start falling off the desk. Oof. And I see, and they're like, they're just old math papers. I was like, okay, acknowledge, go to, to the other side of the hallway, another empty bedroom, say hello. And then I look up, and I'm like, oh, God, it's the attic steps like never gonna end <laughs> and i walk up the steps i literally feel it felt like when you're running through an airport and there are people all around you suddenly the amount of people just like quadrupled and i felt a hand on my arm and it was a little hand and i was like okay we just got to get up these steps and then i got to run out because i still had three minutes left i was trying to go so fast so fast thought that was actually going to make it and i got up and it was like a very alarming sight it was a perfectly brand new attic it was all new wood unfinished like plywood it was bright it was clean and throughout the entire thing were these piles this high of 1970s coffee table books. And I was like, what the hell just happened? I could see from the font, I could see by the yellowing. I was like, holy cow. And I was just staring there and suddenly I heard like a crack, like a tree branch and I turn around, I'm like, oh my God, I gotta go. I run down also because at this point I'm like, I wanna get out of here. But I run down because I still have to do the cleansing that I'm gonna do anyway, right? Run downstairs, run downstairs, run downstairs, get out, boom, with two seconds to spare. And Allison's like, so what do you think of my house? And I'm like, <laughs> it's great because I don't want to say anything to her because her son is there. At the time, was maybe like six years old. So I'm like, oh, my God, it's great. I love the woodwork in the kitchen. It's amazing, <laughs> right? So we go in, and I was like, come with me. I want you involved a little bit in what I do. So I start with it. Right. I use a lot of vinegar. I don't burn sage. That's not my thing. But I burn some other things. I cleanse down. We can talk about that later. I do. It's fine. I do the whole thing all over again. And I was like, what is the deal with the attic? And she's like, I haven't been up there yet. I was like, good luck with that. <laughs> so we go downstairs. It feels wildly different. Also, when I went back up, Instead of just the white vinegar that I use and a couple of other things I put together, I used the river water because I was like, this place really needs to be cleansed out of a lot of stuff. Said my blessings, and then I looked to my right as I walked out, and I was like, there's something going on with the back property. I'm not sure what that is, but I knew that it was not my business. That I knew for sure. Mm -hmm. I turn around, and I say goodbye. I got to go. 
I take a picture of the of the house just sort of like click and you kind of see Allison standing there and you see her son kind of running by and you see the house. Just the side, nothing. I just want to send it to Woody so he can you know, give his old one too so he can kind of be involved in it, see what he has to say about it. From there, I go in further into the mountains. I have a party to go to later and it's not sitting right with me. I don't know what's not sitting right, but I, I'm not relaxing like I can when I go to somebody's house for a dinner party. And then I have to go drive all the way home, which is like an hour into the other side of the mountains. And I get to my road and I'm just waiting to feel better. And I'm not feeling better. I keep looking in the rear view mirror into my back seat because I feel like somebody's there. It's one of those things. I get to my house, which is a house I have been in, my, in and out of my entire life. I know that I know I'm safe there. I walked in and I checked every closet. Something was bothering me. Something was bothering me. Something was bothering me. Being so high into the mountains before, I didn't have any bars on my phone. And all of a sudden I get to my house and it's going ding, 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 buzz, 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 buzz. And I look down and I have 17 voice messages and 35 texts all from Woody. Mm And I keep saying, did you look at the photo? Did you look at the photo? Put it on a computer and make it bigger. Look at the photo. Look at the photo. Look at the photo. Call me, call me, call me, call me, call me. I get him on the phone. I was like, hey, did you look at the picture? I was like, fuck no. I was like, my car is full of people. My house is full of people. I can't. I was like, I feel weird. He was like, okay, you got, he's like, I can read it. You have a really weak and very needy energy stuck on you. At the same time, I get a call from another friend, my friend Betty. And she's like, I feel weird about you. What you got stuck on your back? (laughs) So they tell me, they tell me both. They've never met at this point. They know very much about each other. They've never met. They told me the exact same thing to do, right? They said, open your door and yell, get out four times and slam that door. I was like, it's easy enough. I do it, slam it. I'm like, fine, I'm going to bed. I will deal with everything else in the morning. I go to bed, and for the first time in my life living there, I shut the door, and I get under the covers, and I'm like, I just have to go to sleep. I have to go to sleep. And all of a sudden, I start hearing this in the front of my house, and I don't know what it is, and it's constant, and it's over and over and over and over again. And what do I do? I don't go anywhere near it. (laughs) I live in the middle of nowhere, and I know it's got to be an animal of some kind. It feels like it's banging against a window, and I want, and it's so constant. I'm like, I don't know what it is, but I'm tired. It's been a long day, (laughs) and quite honestly, at that point in my life, I could not deal with it. I get up in the morning, and I still, I kind of hear it. It's softer, and I go to the front of my house. And there on my window is a moth this big <laughs> with a body like hot dog. <laughs> like something that you only see in science books. And it's hanging on to the, the screen. And of course, it's hitting the window as the wind goes, right? It's very windy night because, of course, so that night had to be windy in here. <laughs> so I'm still freaked out by everything. And I try to center myself and all the things I know how to do at that point. Because remember, cleansing is new. Everything else is old hat for me, but cleansing like that level was so new. I do the next thing I know how to do as a smart, intuitive, witchy person. I get in my car and I go back to the city. (laughs) I hightail it back to my apartment. My mom is in town and she's at the apartment. And she goes, and I'm telling her this story. And she was like, oh, my God. I'm like, I know. And she's like, have you looked at the picture? And I said, no. She's like, get it backed up. You're fine here. I'm like, yeah, I'm fine. It's going to be fine. It's fine, right? (laughs) And I open up the picture and I make it big. And you can see in the window the little girl. (gasps) The little round white face with the little dark eyes looking out. And above her, you can see something wispy. To me, when I read it, it looked like the one of the men that I saw when I was in the house. Nothing bad between them. He just happened to be there one time time, and she lived there as well. I go to find out the next day that the man laying on the floor that I saw, 
of course, was the friend of the person that owned the house that he was trying to help out, was the man who died the night she decided to move. Oh, that was that man. Oh, wow. Yeah. Thank you. Wow. Tonight's live Ghost Stories by the Fire episode was recorded at the Light Club Curiosity Shop in Warwick, New York. The Light Club Curiosity Shop is a metaphysical, healing, and artistic haven. They offer handmade magical items, healing sessions, and unique events in their 8,000 square foot space. The Ghost Stories by the Fire theme song, Lovely, comes from the breakout hit horror movie, The Deeper You Dig by The Addams Family. The Deeper You Dig is an edgy, heartfelt ghost story that will haunt you long after it ends. Watch it now for free on Tubi. And thanks for listening to a live Ghost Stories by the Fire episode. If you like these creepy tales and want to keep them coming, please follow the Ghost Stories by the Fire podcast and drop a nice review. You can watch video recordings of Ghost Stories on my Sasha Tarot Diva YouTube channel and find out how you can attend a live Ghost Stories by the Fire event by going to my website event page at sashagram.com. Do you have a story, a spooky one, you'd like to share with me? Send me an email through my website contact page at sashagram.com. Thanks again for listening. Love you.